Hello, my name is Elaine Marsh, Watershed Specialist for Summit Metro Parks. We manage over 14,000 acres of land in 16 parks. Gorge Metro Park, pictured here, is one of those parks. In 2016, our commissioners voted to support the removal of Gorge Dam just upstream from this location. We established a program, Free the Falls, to educate the community on the many benefits of removing that dam. At the same time, we established a community stakeholder group who understood that removing the dam was going to be a very big project, but that it would create even larger value for the park itself, for the Cuyahoga River, and for Northeast Ohio as a whole. Those stakeholders include the City of Akron, the City of Cuyahoga Falls, First Energy, Ohio EPA, the State of Ohio, Summit County, Summit County Council, Summit Metro Parks, and US EPA. This group gives technical advice, builds support, and helps raise funds. Part of the project's important vision is the restoration of these falls, the Big Falls for which the city of Cuyahoga Falls is named. Previously, these falls were the central feature in the gorge and were one of Ohio's largest tourist attractions in the late 1800s. Now, a century later, they are buried, drowned under the dam. Gorge Dam was built in 1911 as part of a nationwide effort to advance hydroelectric production. With an elevation change of over 200 feet in less than two miles, the gorge of the Cuyahoga looked to be the Northeast Ohio spot for hydroelectric power. The dam pool provided cooling water for a coal-fired power plant upstream and water was taken off the top of the dam sent a half a mile downstream through this penstock all the way down to the turbine generating plant. In 1929, the land around the dam was leased to Akron Park District, the predecessor of Summit Metro Parks. So, for nearly a century, the dam and the park have coexisted. So let's take a closer look at that history. In 1914, the dam was completed for coal-fired and hydroelectric production. In 1929, the park was established. Hydro operations continued from 1917 to 1958. Ultimately, it was the unpredictable nature of the Cuyahoga River's flow, and not any problem with engineering, that caused the end of operations and so, in 1958, they were abandoned. The Penn Stock and Hydro Production Plant were deconstructed in the 70s. Electrical production at the coal-fired power plant ended in 1991 as it was no longer cost-effective, and in 2009, that plant was raised. So, since 1991, the dam has lain idle with no future prospects. Dams by their nature are temporary features on the river. Eventually time in the river will remove whatever we put in its path. And irregardless of their beneficial uses, dams have significant water quality implications. This is the now deconstructed Monroe Falls Dam. Note the algae buildup in the stagnant water in the dam pool. So let's take a more close look at what is going on with water quality and dams. It's pretty well understood that the most obvious problem with dams is that they are a barrier to fish. In addition, a dam modifies dissolved oxygen, modifies flow, modifies temperature, reduces habitat, traps and concentrates sediment and toxin, and totally alters the food chain. So overall, the chemical, physical, and biological water quality is degraded. In dam pools, 
These negative effects extend the length of the pool. In the case of Gorge Dam, that's about a mile and a half. So now let's look at how dams directly impact the Cuyahoga River. This is a slide of aquatic life health of the Middle and Lower River in 2008. The colors mean pretty much what you might expect. Red means non-attainment of aquatic life standards, yellow means partial, and green means full attainment. By the way, before the Clean Water Act, red would have been the only color on this slide. Thanks to our investment in clean water infrastructure, we now see a lot of green. But let's look at where there are still sections of yellow and red. This section is caused by the effect of the navigation channel where the river is dredged to 26 feet to accommodate lake carriers. For the rest of the lower and middle river, the aquatic life standards are met, except for here, the Canal Diversion Dam in Brecksville, and here, the Gorge Dam. That's a pretty impressive statement on the impact of dams on water quality and why the restoration of water quality is a key reason for removing the Gorge Dam. This is home, the Great Lakes. What we do in the Cuyahoga affects Lake Erie, part of this enormous system that comprises about 20% of the Earth's freshwater supply. In 1983, the lakes were on the brink of toxic collapse. 43 hotspots, or AOCs, were designated for cleanup. One is the Cuyahoga. The current preeminence of Great Lakes tourism, recreation, fishing, shipping, and related economic development is in no small part a direct result of efforts on, by the AOC since then. More on the importance of the Great Lakes later. Removing the dam will be expensive, but it's only one piece of our overall investment in clean water. Since the Clean Water Act of 1972, Northeast Ohio has spent billions upgrading its municipal and industrial discharges. We continue to spend money to restore floodplains, wetlands, and riparian areas. Green infrastructure is a growing part of our stormwater toolkit expenses. And over the next 20 years, Northeast Ohio will be spending over $3 billion in order to correct our problems with combined sewer overflows. So removing the dam is a necessary piece of our overall investment to complete the restoration of the Cuyahoga River. There's a lot of value in clean water investment, including human health and quality of life. In 2019, we celebrated the 50 year anniversary of the last burning of the Cuyahoga River. In 1969, people avoided all surface water and now our waterfronts are magnets as quality places for people to live, work and play. Before the Clean Water Act, our dirty rivers were shunned Floodplains were used as landfills. With water quality improvements and the recent addition of Valley View Metro Park, Summit Metro Parks now manages over 1,500 acres along a seven mile stretch of the lower Cuyahoga River, giving the urban core of Summit County scenic and recreational value. Once, due to fear of illness, few paddled the Cuyahoga. Now our river is crowded with kayaks, canoes, and rowing skulls. Park managers along the river are building out the 100 mile long Cuyahoga River water trail. The trail is completed from the upper river down to the gorge. When the dam is removed, there will be 2.5 miles of continuous white water. This unique Ohio experience will attract world-class paddlers to come and enjoy our class five rapids and the rest of us can sit back and enjoy and add tourism dollars to the spectacle. Eventually, the trail will be completed all the way to Lake Erie. Before the dam, the gorge with its Great Falls was one of the most visited attractions in Ohio. When the dam is removed, tourists will once again flock to the area. More importantly, by linking with the region's other major attractions, including parks, 
the towpath, and our world-class museums, the Restored Gorge will bolster Northeast Ohio not only as a first-class tourism destination, but also a desired place for young, skilled workers to live. This workforce will attract business and help restore the region's vitality. A restored Cuyahoga River will be an economic driver for the region for generations to come. In this larger context of economic expansion, removing the Gorge Dam is a big idea that combines and magnifies the region's greatest prospects for a more vibrant future. For the last two decades, under the leadership of Ohio EPA, five obsolete dams on the Cuyahoga have been studied and removed, including the Kent Dam in 2005, the Monroe Falls Dam in 2006, and in 2013, two dams in the city of Cuyahoga Falls. These four projects resulted in more benefits than we could have imagined. As expected, they resulted in the success of the primary goal, the attainment of full attainment of aquatic life standards. In addition, all provided public access to areas previously rarely used. All sites provided expanded recreation, accelerated land and water trail connections, small businesses, and most importantly, they expanded their community's vision of the value of their waterfronts as drivers for quality of life and economic development. And just this summer, after years of study, in a few short weeks, the canal diversion dam was deconstructed. A free-flowing river was restored and a deadly hazard to paddlers was removed. We expect that aquatic life standards will be exceeded here. In fact, this section of river may eventually be designated exceptional warm water habitat. That's the A plus of water quality. And there's a chance that migrating steelhead may find spawning ground upstream. Imagine the Cuyahoga from burning river to trout stream. So by removing five dams, we have restored health to nearly 10 miles of the Cuyahoga River. That's 10% of its length. So here we are, back to the dam in question, the Gorge Dam. It lies between the cities of Akron and Cuyahoga Falls. It's 440 feet wide and 57 feet high, a very huge hunk of solid concrete. And as we have said, it is functionally obsolete with no future prospects. In 2015, Ohio EPA contracted a study for phase one of the project to determine costs. The report showed that the vast majority of the cost would be the removal of nearly 900,000 cubic yards of contaminated sediment. This study estimated the total cost of the project to be at least $70 million, a very hefty price tag to be sure. But the cost of infrastructure projects, especially bridges, are often in this range. So we should think of the removal of Gorge Dam as the region's bridge to the future of the Cuyahoga River, a future that will feature clean water and all of its scenic, economic, and recreational values. So as promised, here we are back to the Great Lakes, a region important not only for its water, but for its funding. The Great Lakes Restoration Initiative was established by Congress in 2010 to accelerate the cleanup of the lakes. The GLRI and the Legacy Act, one of its programs, are critical to removing the Gorge Dam. Every phase of the project is dependent on funding from the GLRI. Currently, we are in Phase 2, Design and Engineering of the Sediment Management. The Legacy Act is providing 65% of the cost and the state of Ohio is contributing 35% of the $1.2 million project. US EPA, manager of this portion, hired Jacobs to complete the work. Studies have been completed relating to the dam pool and its sediment 
and to the disposal area. We are now in the design portion of phase two. Jacobs will engineer the mechanical dredging, the mixing and pumping, and distribution of sediment to the disposal site. Design and engineering will be completed in early 2021. Next steps. Currently, we are completing phase two. Phase three, removal of the contaminated sediment from the river and depositing it into the containment area will begin only as funds from the Legacy Act and the local share are available. This is the most expensive phase, but it could begin as early as 2021. Through a grant from another program in the GLRI, the City of Akron is currently in the process of designing the deconstruction of the dam. Phase five, the final phase, the dam will be removed. In the meantime, we continue to educate the public and look for money. Once the contaminated sediments and the dam are removed, we will reignite the golden age of the gorge. Summit Metro Parks will have a whole new river and a whole new park to discover and interpret. Removing the gorge dam will ensure that the Cuyahoga's clean water blessings continue to flow down through succeeding generations all the way to Lake Erie. And we will be quite literally living in the days of future past. With such prospects, we are determined to succeed.